what what do you think that mrna vaccine did to people uh first of all uh, it infected all of our cells why most vaccines when you inject it stay right where they injected it okay they put it into a solution that sort of keeps it affecting right there the COVID vaccine um put uh, spikes the 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 program to make a spike rna genetic code and put that into the vaccine when injected the the vaccine spread through the body so any cell that picked up the rna was going to then make the vac the spike well that's what the immune system sees so phase one you put the vaccine in you infect a bunch of cells they put the spike on their membrane the immune system looks at it, learns that that's an infected cell, kills the cell, but it learns the spike. I say, so what? I say, well, the problem is this. Take a booster. I go, what happens if you take a booster? Well, you're injecting again throughout the body, all this stuff. I go, but what? You already got the immune system that will work on it. Now it's killing cells all over the body because any time a cell took it in and because it was an RNA vaccine, it's genetic engineering. So that many of the cells picked up the RNA and converted it into DNA so that the nucleus makes these spikes. Talk about long term. I go, yeah, you've infected these cells with the, the message to make the spike. It's in your DNA in many of the cases. I go, what does that mean? It's like, it's not coming out of the DNA. <laughs> it's long term at that point. And the issue about it is what? It's called genetic engineering. It was illegal to use, according to the World Health Organization, to make a vaccine with nucleic acids, RNA and DNA in it. And yeah, Hey, it was faster, it was cheaper, and it was an easier way to make the vaccine. The pharmaceutical companies, based on making a profit, said, man, <laughs> this is faster and easier than the old-fashioned way. Let's do it. Yeah, but it's illegal. They changed the definition. They pulled RNA out of the definition so they could sell the vaccine. It was like, it was always genetic engineering. And the fact is what? One thought was that when the spikes were made by a cell and put on the surface of the cell so the immune system can see it, that they stayed on the surface of the cell. And it turns out, no, they break off the surface of the cell. So our cell makes the toxic part, the spike, and releases it, it goes through the rest of the system. So we're essentially attacking ourselves with a virus, without the whole virus, we didn't need that because the problem came from the spike. And the spike attaches to all these cells. We were making it worse as it went along. Uh, and the idea was why? It was cheaper. That was the problem. It was cheaper to make the vaccine. At the cost of what? Uh, a pandemic. It, it, it actually, people with the vaccine had more problems than those people with that with the vaccine. But then came the bigger problem, the psychology of, I received the vaccine, you didn't do the vaccine, you're the troublemaker. And I go, wait, if you received the vaccine, why are you concerned about me? If you got the vaccine, you should be okay and don't care about me. So don't care about me if I don't want the vaccine. But it separated people. I live in a small community when I'm in New Zealand. As small as that community was, it got split in half, pro-anti-vaccine. Uh, uh, and the point about it was, this is a manipulation. It was, uh, uh, it was totally anti-science because they broke the rule about making uh, genetic vaccines. Uh, and, and the cost of it was the sickness and illness. Uh, and, and then everybody uh, got the uh, media version of people dying. So many people are dying. We have to have all these semi-tractor trailers in New York that hold the bodies of all the... What a bunch of BS, belief system. And I go, why? Because it wasn't true. And all the hype of all the people dying wasn't true. I said, what do you mean? Well, let's add a little financial factor. I go, what is it? 
the government gave, I think, approximately four thousand dollars to every to the hospital for every patient they treated for COVID. And if they put a tube in their mouth, uh, and, you know, to swallow, they got ten thousand dollars. Guess what? The guy comes in with a car accident. Oh, I think he's got he's got COVID. Uh, and the point about it, I saw the printout from the government said, if the test proves they got COVID, then you write they have COVID. And then it goes on, the next sentence says, and if you think they have COVID, write COVID. It's like, oh my God, it was a, a windfall of money to all the hospitals. Why? Everybody came in. Car accident, fall down, break a leg. No, you got COVID, you got COVID. The statistics, everybody's getting COVID. The money, it was all money. It was all pharmaceutical. It was all BS. There was a, a report called a Government Oversight Committee, which reviews the results of projects like the COVID thing. Number one, all of the scientists that went before Congress lied. It's right there in the report. They all lied about this. Number two, wearing masks, 100% ineffective. Number three, keeping six feet apart, 100% ineffective. Taking kids out of school, a disaster on development and social organization. And these are the consequences of this so-called COVID. They're still pushing the vaccine. And the fact is, no, what happens if something like comes along, the vaccine mutates, mutates, and then it becomes not as destructive. So the more current versions of the COVID are less toxic than the original versions. That's the way it always occurs in the history of civilization and the development of the immune system. It always does that. But we bought a story. We bought a whole propaganda about the fear. What does fear do? Takes away the power of consciousness from the public. Just tell me what I need to do. Not talk to my neighbor? Okay. Don't, don't go and meet with people? Okay. It's like you see somebody driving the car alone wearing a mask. Why? Right. <laughs> you know, there's nobody in the car to affect you. What are you wearing a mask for? You know, but right. the whole fear, 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 and that's how you manipulate people. Fear has always been the manipulation. Right. I'm, I'm very curious to know how um, the echo of these uh, the people that got the vaccine, how is this going to ripple out? Like what health consequences are they going to experience down the line, do you think? Um, we're seeing like myocarditis. Um, oh, heard, my God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, first of all, how about the fact that uh, young, young boys are dying of heart attacks? Young boys never died of heart attacks. But all of a sudden, we started seeing kids on the playing field, on the sports field, young guys, young kids dying of a heart attack. Never happened. Why? The COVID vaccine attacked the heart, number one. The COVID vaccine attacks the ovaries. There's a reproductive issue that results wow. from this. It's passing on as well. There are consequences of this that are long-term. That's what they call it, all long, long-acting COVID or whatever. They generated that. Was it an accident from eating some stupid dead animal in a Chinese market? No, we know it came from the lab that was making this vaccine, not the vaccine, making the COVID. Hello? But keep them in fear, they'll take that vaccine. They'll take the booster shot and it's like, whew. And I say, what's it doing? Eliminating portions of the population, specifically poor people. I go, eliminating poor people, that's bad. I go, not according, and this is, let me emphasize this, to the leadership who bought, and I put this in quotes, science. What do you mean? Science has revealed to the, a, a false, it was, the whole thing is false, but we bought it from a guy, a philosopher called Malthus, Thomas Malthus. He came up with a theory that Plants uh, and animals grow at different rates. Plants grow arithmetically. Okay, what does that mean? Well, the farmer does, got a bushel of wheat this year, and if he works hard, he'll get two bushels of wheat next year. And if he does extra weeding and puts some fertilizer, he'll get three bushels, and then he'll get four bushels. So it goes up one, two, three, four, five. 
But animals, he said, double their population, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. I go, well, what's the point? Put it on the graph, and what's the graph show you? There are many more animals than there is food. And this is what led to the belief of survival of the fittest, which was then put into Darwinian theory. It was false. It was 100% false. Animal populations stabilize. They don't keep doubling all the time. So it was false science, but built into the theory, and then we bought the theory. And so the point very seriously is the whole mission of survival of the fittest and competition is based on something that's not true. Can we live with the population we have? According to the leadership that follows that old, outdated, wrong science, no, we must get rid of people. How do you get rid of people? Famine, okay. Uh... Uh, disease. Uh, this is actually, uh, Malthus came up with a word called slum. And what was that? He said, build the housing for poor people in the swampy area, because in the swampy area there's more disease, and therefore we can eliminate the poor people from breeding too fast by having them have disease. Well, that was one. The Germans came up and said war is a way of eliminating the population. And they say, oh, our finest and bravest young men, I go, that's a bunch of BS, why? Who are the soldiers? The people that can't get a job. Mainly black people as well. I go, you put them in there, and if they got lost, it's like, oh, 15,000 troops died during this thing. It's like, oh, that's like, just 15,000 people. I go, what? <laughs> And we write it off. Why? Because in their belief system, too many people. And COVID also had a selection process against the poor people who were the less healthy people. And that was part of the thing. Eliminate the population. Bring it down. And all of a sudden I go, we could have <laughs> 8 billion people not even bother the planet. 10 billion people won't bother the planet but not the way we are living today because the resources won't provide for it. And so we're living in a world that they're using a fake science to say it justifies eliminating the poor people. I, I love it because Darwin's theory says survival of the fittest. I go, what is fittest? What does that mean? The most fit. I go, wait, you ready? Definition of fit, just fit, capable of surviving. I said, well, then why survival of the fittest? What about the, those who were just fit? Or how about those who were a little bit more? They were fitter, but they weren't the fit test. And the answer is survival of the fittest. I go, where the hell did that come from? And the answer was Darwin created his theory in Victorian England that had an upper class and a lower class. He built the philosophy of that into the equation that said, Evolution is based on the upper class, not the rest. So survival of the fittest means keep the upper class, get rid of the rest. And we have a government that buys that as science when it's totally false and gives it to us back. Oh, this is science. It's like, no, it's not. That's false science, pseudoscience. Wow, it's really refreshing to hear you say this. Uh, you know, I, I look up to you as like a, a medical professor, a biologist, a uh, somebody who taught at Stanford, but it's really nice to hear you saying things that, that go against the mainstream. I, I Look, I was a tenured professor in a medical school. That means a job for life. I could have stayed there my whole life, got a job. But my research on stem cells revealed that the environment controlled the genes, and yet the curriculum in the medical school is that genes controlled life. I said, what is the meaning of teaching that? I said, oh my God, we're turning people into victims. I said, what do you mean? Well, as far as you know, did you pick the genes you came with? No. Uh, you don't like the characteristics. Can you change the genes? No. And then tell them genes turn on and off by themselves. And what have you programmed? I'm a victim of my heredity. And therefore, I am weak. I am a victim. I need you to fix me. And then steps in the pharmaceutical company and says, let me fix you. And the reality was, my research said that was wrong. And therefore, I looked and I said, I cannot 
go back in a classroom and teach people that they're victims when they're not victims. Why? It's the environment. You can control the environment. You control that. That means you have the power of controlling your genes. The genes don't control you. And yet we're teaching people that genes control their lives and that they themselves can't affect the genes and therefore uh, we're victims and have to get the help from outside. <laughs> <laughs>